Alright guys, so in today's video, we're going to be doing a VOD review of Blake's Solo Cash Cup. He placed second place in the Solo Cash Cup that was yesterday, and basically I'm going to be going over the game that he won. This was one of the most stacked games in a Solo Cash Cup that I have seen in a while. He did a really good job in early, mid game, and late game. He did very, very well in terms of where he landed, how he played, how he pushed fights, if he didn't push fights in his rotations. So I'm basically going to be analyzing this. I would highly recommend you guys do stay until the end of the video if you guys do want to learn how good of a solo player Blake is. He is one of the most consistent solo cash cup players I have ever seen. So yeah, let's hop right into it. So as you guys can see, we have Blake, solo cash cup, second place right here. So I'm gonna remove this from the screen and we're gonna start. Obviously Blake does land shark, so he lands a POI that's man mainly uncontested. However, one uh, once in a while there's gonna be one or two people that do try to land here. And he lands on the shotgun, which is always good. You guys always wanna try to get the best drops so that you'll have a guaranteed weapon. Um, in order to fight off spawn and I just want to highlight the fact that right here you guys can see that Blake is actually going to be focusing more on um, you know spawn fights before anything else because he wants to try to you know have more of that you know control over the POI so he gets the kill onto this player and then he immediately starts to continue looting he doesn't really waste any time you know farming you know boxing up or anything he kind of just goes immediately for these slurp barrels and I would like to highlight the fact that he's not really popping any shield before he gets these slurp barrels because he wants to ensure that he can get the most, you know, uh, bang for your buck in terms of a shotgun. Um, I mean, sorry, sorry, shield, not shotgun. Um, but anyway, basically what he's trying to do is trying to just met up and has a, you know, a strict loot route that he sticks to. So as you guys can see right here, I am for, I am in the Fortnite map right now. Basically, I'm going to be analyzing what makes the sh shark such a good solo drop, especially for cash cups and stuff like that. So I'm just going to zoom in quickly right here. As you guys can see, we are in the shark and I'm just going to, you know, click control plus a couple of times just to, you know, show you guys. Um, but basically, where Blake landed was right here, and what he, what the shark does for him, essentially, is it gives him a strict loot route that has a lot of loot. So as you guys can see, there can be up to three chests that spawn here, along with the bunker chest that spawn sometimes. However, in Blake's game, it didn't spawn, obviously. However, what he does is he gets the floor loot spawn that spawned here. He killed the kid who landed right here, because that kid did not have a very good drop, and he didn't really plan out what where he was going to be looting. So Blake kills that player, and then the other guy eventually does dip. He just leaves the POI because he doesn't really want to, you know, fight Blake right here. So as you guys can see, he gets the, you know, the slurp barrels, then he keeps on looting in this direction. And I would like to highlight the way that he loots. As you guys can see, he goes down here and then he goes to this little area and he eventually wraps around and goes back up and loots this little area. I would like to highlight this because this is the most efficient loot route in all of Shark. Obviously, these chests are quite important and you should be getting them, but they're a bit higher up and a bit more difficult to get. So that's why I would recommend you guys try to get all of the chests on this layer that are more congested because that'll not only minimize the amount of time you spend looting, but it'll probably also give you good and equivalent loot that you're going to be getting from these chests and there's also the noms boxes that he ends up looting for the peppers and for some extra shield and health if he needs it and then he obviously does get materials from this boat and rocks all over the area around here so this is really what makes the shark such a good drop it's a very good poi if you guys want to get a lot of loot in a short amount of time so as you guys can see, Blake is really always farming here. He farms pretty much 24-7. He wants to make sure that before the first zone starts moving, he gets up to max material so that he doesn't need to really worry about that while he's rotating. I see too many players not farm enough most of the time, which is one big issue that I see with a lot of basic solo players. And if you guys want to, you know, make sure that you have all of those mats, as you guys can see, he has basically max materials now. You guys should be farming all the time, and you shouldn't be stopping for really any reason unless somebody pushes you during the early game. So Blake's obviously rotating through the water. He's trying to get to zone. And if you guys don't know, zone is quite far away from him. It's around, you know, uh, that retail row kind of area. It's in the very, very, you know, um, you know, south, uh, well, eastern part of the map which is, you know, a bit more difficult to get to, especially if you land Shark. But the way that he rotates here is very important. As you guys can see, getting into the mid-game, he doesn't look for any mid-game fights, and he's not scared of zone, so that's why he doesn't really, you know, focus on trying to get away as fast as you can. I know that some, like, he stops here to get, you know, these fish, which is quite important, and this actually will be a big, you know, player in winning in the game. Um, but I would like to highlight the fact that he doesn't really look for fights here. He tries to just, you know, get to zone as fast as you can. So now we're in Pleasant Park. Like I said before, he's not scared of the zone. He's going here to use the upgrade NPC that spawns here sometimes. Obviously, this time it does spawn, and he goes to the upgrade NPC in order to do whatever he needs. He gets a quest, as you guys can see, up, 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 uh, upgrade his, his, um, his primal rifle to a blue one. And as you guys can see, he's trying to rotate on his way. He's trying to obviously get his spaz because he needs to, you know, get mechanical parts to side grade that blue makeshift to his spaz. And as you guys know... Zone is not that big of a factor as people make it out to be as long as you guys have basic whites and obviously in you know Pleasant Park there's cabbages and there's campfires but as long as you guys have basic whites you shouldn't be that scared of zone. 
So as you guys can see, what Blake is doing right here, he's trying to rotate fully past the area around, you know, all these players. He's trying to get to that dead side of zone because this is obviously a stacker of a game. There's 66 people alive and this is a pretty stacked solo game. So what he's trying to do is trying to get to that dead side of zone and focus on getting the high ground in better positions that can potentially win him the game later on. So this is one thing about the way that Blake plays. He tries to play very conservative and passive. He tries to get to the spots in the map that will solidify him the win and not necessarily just a couple of kills or some better loot. So Blake even rotates onto these mountains for the extra high ground, which is quite important if you guys do want to try and get some, you know, uh, elevated high ground, natural high ground, natural better positions. He obviously goes to this NPC, which might be able to give him something, but, you know, obviously the NPC doesn't give too much. It's not a, you know, insanely good NPC. It gives him a big pot, though, which is quite good, and he can obviously, you know, hold that just in case he needs it. I would also like to highlight the fact that Blake is rotating once again on the dead side, but he also has a harpoon gun. Like I highlighted in my Mr. Savage solo analysis video, Harpoon guns are one of the best items, especially in solos, for playing it well. Even in trios, they're fantastic because you guys can obviously do, like, you know, harpoon guns into boxes. But in solos, they're really good for refreshes. They give you materials if you want to harpoon them. And they're also ex just all around a good item for end game and for mid game and even for fishing. So they're just a very useful item to carry. This is why Blake and Mr. Savage and good solo players like these two will carry them. So getting into our late game here, you guys can see that he obviously positioned himself very well to be on the edge of half and half zone. Once again, he put, he put, uh, he positions himself on this zone in order to get the half and half circle. Circle, pardon me, I accidentally said something wrong earlier. But as you guys can see, positioning on the edge of this zone is very good. You guys always want to try to get onto this side. And I would highly recommend that you guys try to play as much scrims and, you know, arena as you can to practice getting these zones by, you know, luck. You know, obviously there's going to be a bit of RNG involved. However, Blake knows how to combat that RNG to the, you know, the greatest extent in order to get that zone most of the time. So right here, as you guys can see, Blake is making an early tarp to zone. What that basically does is solidifies his position in zone a little bit more. Obviously, zone didn't pull too far from him. And he's trying to look for a little bit of a refresh here. He sees this player right behind this wall and potentially might be able to get a kill on him because there's not too many other players around him. And he's able to, you know, apply some pressure just in case he needs storm surge, just in case he needs some mats, just in case he needs anything from this player. So he obviously tries to play a little bit aggressive, but then backs off of this player because he doesn't really need to, you know, be that aggressive in order to fight him. And he does throw down a stinkfish. This is one thing that's very important. Stinkfish act like stink grenades back from season nine. So he eventually does, you know, rack up that elimination as you guys can see, and he doesn't, he's able to get the loot from this, uh, which is quite important if you guys are going to be trying to solidify yourself in that win. Blake before this had loot that was good, but it wouldn't be good enough to win him the game. So now he just got that refresh and now he's able to properly play out the rest of his game. So as you guys can see right here, what Blake is doing is he's building a new tarp with the new materials from this player that he just killed, and he's obviously going to obviously gonna be dropping them and transporting them to his new tarp. He drops them right here, and then goes back to get the old ones that he left before. He goes back up, and then he obviously, you know, regroups with his materials, and then just basically is max mat and has extra to work with. So during the first moving zone, he tries to throw stinks at some players that are down below, and he's not really trying to, you know, get too involved with the low ground. He's trying to play a mid-ground layer and just tarp and kind of be unseen. He obviously does go onto the dead side here. This is the dead side of zone where the least players are during the end game. I have explained this before. The dead side of end game zones is the side of zone where there's like the least builds and the least players on in general. But he's obviously trying to, you know, try to stay ahead of that zone. However, right here, he knows that he could, he could potentially get a refresh from a player coming behind. And he obviously does, as you guys can see right there. He gets the one pump on this kid and then he gets his materials and keeps on going. So right here, he drops down so that he, he's not going to be sprayed. Obviously, you should probably drop down most of the time in order to, you know, not be sprayed by high ground and not be contested by kids up top that might, you know, potentially need refreshes. If you guys play low ground in, in a mountain situation like here, dropping down is most of the time the best idea, and you guys will be able to do it almost all of the time as long as you're good on materials. So right here, I would like to point out something. As you guys can see, what Blake did right there is he was placing the uh, the floor and then the ramp, but he wasn't building a wall to this side. Something Sometimes it's a matter of habit. Sometimes what you'll do is you'll accidentally place a wall there. However, if there's nobody on this side, which there isn't because he's on the edge of zone, that's also the dead side, you don't really need to place a wall there to conserve your materials. Obviously, Blake has a ton of materials and he doesn't really need to worry about that. But what he's doing right here is quite important and it does save him a lot of materials coming into the end game. It's also something just about your awareness and how you know how to play end games. This obviously comes with practice. So as you guys can see right here, Blake is trying to look for the high ground just so he can win the game with that, but he does decide to harpoon some materials uh, near this player, and he obviously gets the you know harpoon tag on him, that's pretty good. 
Um, but what he does is he drops down a little bit more because he knows that the high ground is going to have to drop down as well because they're too high due to the elevation of, you know, the area around him. And what he does right here is he's trying to, you know, play a little bit conservative, look for a refresh if he can get it. He obviously does get a big tag onto this player for 172, but just eventually doesn't end up getting the kill. So right here, what he's trying to do is play through another enemy player's builds, and he looks for high ground, as you guys will be able to see in a couple of seconds. He looks for, you know, a sort of beam onto the high ground area. Um, which he does eventually find, and I'm pretty sure he gets a kill from this area. He gets a full crack on that kid, gets the kill, and then finally realizes that he has the high ground, and he can solidify this to, you know, secure his position as the winner of this game. So as you guys can see right here, what Blake is trying to do is look for more kills during the end game. He's trying to shoot at people. He's trying to, you know, just get tags on them. He, because right here is the place where Blake plays the best. He gets a lot of kills during this end game, which is really smart. You guys want to try to get the most kills in times where, you know, you're not going to be third partied in this situation. You're just, it's just going to be you and another player that you guys are fighting. So you guys can obviously see he drops down a little bit to try to get some more kills. Obviously gets a fat beam onto that player and gets the elimination onto Berserker. And then he obviously keeps going up and he keeps going to this ed edge of this building and then keeps spraying down onto you know the players that are down below who have the more materials gets the this kill as you guys can see he obviously sprays this a little bit more and that gets the kill onto nrg edgy and then he keeps he keeps spraying this kid in here he plays a little bit more passive sorry for the audio cutting out this is a little bit of a copyrighted section so it did cut out for a little bit um but as you guys can see he's focusing on killing this player and i would like to highlight something right here blake has almost 200 materials this is 100 percent more than the player uh, that he's fighting has so he's trying to play very box fight oriented he's trying to really like you know try to piece this kid up and try to like you know box him he's not really trying to go for clips or anything but he's more so trying to ensure that he wins this end game fight for you know the the win point and the kill point which is two of the most important points he gets a lot of points during this last end game and as you guys can see he started this game off on 130 and finished it on around 170 or 169 but he gets the three points for top two and he's obviously trying to play very aggressive onto this player and win the game because he knows that he has nine builds and whatnot so I would like to highlight that he's not dropping down for the kill because he doesn't want to lose the aim duel against this player, and he's 100% going for, you know, a big pump tag on him. He does drop down there, though, because he knows that he has no builds, and now that he has none, he gets the tag on him, and then he blocks this player in zone, and eventually the player dies. So right here, he wins the game. That was a fantastic performance from Blake. His rotations during mid-game and the overall, like, you know, end-game priorities were fantastic in this game. So I would highly recommend if you guys want to do this yourself, go into his stream. I'll link it in the description. Go into this VOD and please just, you know, watch him play this game. What, learn it from your own. Like, like just please, VOD reviewing pros is one of the best ways. Watching my VOD reviews is pretty decent as well if you guys want to learn from the pros. It's one of the best ways to improve generally. So if you guys did enjoy this video, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel. Please consider using code SonataYT if you guys did enjoy this VOD review and you want to support me and what I do on here on YouTube. Um, but yeah, that's about it for this video, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.